Hey guys, welcome back to another video by Fully Informed Trade, or Fi Trade for short, knowledge for everyone. My name is Alex Cho, and today I'm just going to analyze the markets and talk about what's going on. First of all, the dollar index has had a pretty significant um, gap up initially and then a pullback to end the day off. So, again, today was a little bit weird. I mean, you know, 10 a.m., you know, markets initially had some momentum into it. But then we started pulling back a little on the U.S. dollar index. Uh, moving on, the Dow Jones Industrial Average started off a little strong for the day session, but it gave back a lot of its gains and then it floated up throughout the day. Uh, again, this you know this is just typical uh, behavior in the marketplace. But I do want to go back to the dollar index chart and kind of point out that the market seems to have found somewhat of a base, uh, albeit we don't really know exactly why, aside from the Italian bonnials, which they've finally. Um, finally seem to have bottomed out a little bit and it seems people are doing some profit taking in the Italian bond market. Uh, but again, I don't really have enough time to talk about it in this video. Uh, the Euro US dollar has pulled back a little bit off the session and again that has to do with the Italian bonds a bit. And again, assuming that the Euro US dollar is pulling back, chances are the Euro Japanese yen has pulled back as well. Uh, Euro Japanese yen has gone into that 20 day moving average. Look very closely right here, and the market has touched that 20 day moving average, kissed it, and then pulled right back up. Um, the Euro Japanese yen has closed right below that 100 area. So, overall, market seems to be, you know, I mean, it is almost uh, the end of the, end of the Forex session. Give it two more hours, chances are it's going to close below 100. And uh, if and when it does, chances are. Uh, you know, it's just going to come to show that, you know, we've been juggling with that 100 area on the Euro Japanese yen chart for quite a while now. And uh, basically, I think we're going to stay below 100. And the main reason why I feel that 100 is a key area is because it's, it's a neutral, you know, it's a neutral area, you know, you know, one euro for one, you know, Japanese yen. But um, I think the Japanese yen is going to reign supreme, at least over the short to longer term mainly because we are anticipating a government out of Europe to go bankrupt, namely Greece. And uh, chances are the market participants won't be able to take it on too easily. You know, we're obviously going to get a reaction from that. And, uh, you know, European, you know, bond investors in general don't feel that comfortable getting their yields when they know these governments aren't, aren't able to pay them back very well. So... Again, you know, this all comes back to the Italian bond yields rising. If they rise, chances are the Euro Japanese yen will continue to fall. And that's just because investors are going to close their positions for a profit. And and basically, uh, and if that's and if they just opened their position a couple weeks ago, now if they've held onto these Italian bonds for months or years now, uh, they're still sitting on losses. So they're probably going to profit take a bit, and uh, you know, like let, let go of those losers that ran a little bit and continue to buy into those European, uh, or no, continue to transfer currency out of the Eurozone into the Japanese yen and buy those Japanese treasury bonds just for the sake of at least currency appreciation if the interest rate isn't really worthwhile, well, it makes no difference because uh, the currency at least is um, losing a lot of value to the Japanese yen, so again, I think that's what a lot of bankers are doing these days. Moving on, the gold market has pulled back quite, uh, you know, it, it didn't really pull back much. I mean, we just have, this market is tr trading in a sideways pattern, at least for the moment. Um, again, this all comes back to the dollar. And, uh, you know, the dollar hasn't really made much of a move. I mean, it's progressed a little bit, but, it, you know, it's flatlining, and we're not exactly sure. But the U.S. dollar index happened to, you know, have a rally in the next couple days. Most likely, you know, most likely, chances are, the Euro Japanese yen will continue to go lower, break below that 20-day moving average, and continue this downwards momentum right here. That being said, you know, the Euro-Japanese yen is pulling back primarily because the Italian bond investors are going to start closing their positions, and that should cause the interest rates to go higher. If, in the event, the interest rates were to go a little higher, chances are the U.S. dollar index would have some strength behind it. The dollar index would continue its upwards momentum, and that would cause the gold market to pull back a little bit because, again, the gold is paired to the U.S. dollar index. Um, and uh, if the U.S. dollar were to suddenly uh, have an uptrend, that would, that would counteract any positive momentum in the gold market. 
doesn't mean that gold is a bad investment over the long term. It just means that the dollar is going to um, take precedence over the gold gold market's uh, enthusiasm. So I'm just going to watch this very closely. I'm, I don't plan on opening any trades with gold, gold combining companies, or gold stocks in general. So again, moving on, let's talk about the next chart, which is um, which is going to be the silver chart. Silver again is um, giving you know it gave back some of its momentum. Again, it all comes back down to what silver really is. It's a high risk, high you know high return trade. Granted, you know we're still far away from reaching the wedge or the pennant pattern, um, and you know just just drawing those trend lines, you're seeing that you know we can't even get near that 200-day moving average. Perhaps we could, and there might be a possibility, a slight possibility, if there if, if this bullish uh, flag pattern were to play out. But um, give, give giving you know giving the circumstances, uh, the amount of yield people want, you know, I mean. I think people are, are kind of cooling down to silver because they don't necessarily want to lose a lot of money buying into it. Um, you know, some the people who bought at 40 you know, lost, you know, give or take 25, 33 percent of their investment in the course of a couple of days. And I don't think anybody wants to revisit that type of experience. However, whenever there are buying opportunities in the silver market, people do want to take advantage of them. Um, but again, I don't think that time is now. The main reason is, is because we're, you know, some, something is going to trigger a market pullback, and, and it has to be a negative event. We're just not sure what it's going to be yet. Uh, therefore, you know, we're, we're having options priced at a higher rate um, per unit of volatility. Uh, you know, all, all of a sudden, you know, people are just hedging their, I mean, they're willing to pay more for hedging risks and stuff, and Silver seems to be exposed to the Italian bond market and the European bond market as a whole. Um, if, if, you know, if European bond rates were to continue to rise, chances are that it would cause the Euro US dollar to pull back on the trading uh, on a trading session. And again, that would lead to dollar appreciation. Dollar appreciation would come back and cause the silver spot to pull back yet again. So again, you know, Overall, silver, I'm not too optimistic about. Uh, let's move on to the next chart, which is going to be the Dow Component Index. And uh, this index seems to be hugging on to that 20-day moving average quite a bit. It touched it quite a few times. It's going to be the second consecutive time, almost, that it touches that 20-day moving average. But, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a pretty significant pullback on that 20-day moving average, you know, breaking right below that. So we'll just give it some time. Um, Again, all it, all it would take is one ridiculously strong day on the U.S. dollar index. It's still in a you know upwards trend. Yes, it gave back a bit of gains, but uh, you know all it would take is one significant move on the U.S. dollar index, and that would end the Dow Jones Industrial Average's reign over that 20-day moving average. So you know it, you know all that all, all that um, you know 20-day moving average behavior would be gone the moment the moment the US dollar index were to break down right below, you know, or not break down, but have a significant rally inside of, uh, and, and basically negate any uh, any chances of the Dow component finding support on that 20-day moving average. So that does it for my market review, and I'm just going to go into my stock analysis portion uh, in a separate video. Take care, folks, and I'll see you guys later.